Welcome to the State of Health. I'm your host, Karen Bowling, Cabinet Secretary of the West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources. June is the start of summer vacation season, and that means many of us are spending more time enjoying the outdoors. But it's also the time to make sure we're protected against certain diseases. On today's show, we'll look at summer mosquitoes and the threat of the Zika virus. Also, June 27th is a day set aside for HIV testing nationwide. We'll tell you why it's important and to get tested. And we will look at why parents need to check their child's immunization records now. First, although there have been no confirmed cases of Zika virus transmitted by mosquitoes inside the United States, the types of mosquitoes that carry the disease live in West Virginia. The CDC reports these types of mosquitoes could travel to more states this summer than previously thought. Joining us to talk about that is Dr. Raul Gupta, Commissioner of DHHR's Bureau for Public Health and our State Health Officer. Dr. Gupta, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Madam Secretary. Can you tell us a little bit more about Zika? I know that it's something that's certainly on everyone's mind. Absolutely. Uh, Zika is a disease that's uh, uh, transmitted through the mosquitoes, a particular type of mosquitoes. Uh, it's a virus infection. And we worry about it because especially when you get infected, four out of five people may be totally not have any symptoms, but uh, the other one out of five may have mild infection. Where we are concerned about is especially in pregnant women because it has been now linked to a number of birth defects as well as other diseases in the newborn. Uh, so we are doing a lot of planning and efforts to ensure that people are aware of that and it is a mosquito transmitted disease. I mean, I know it's a, obviously a serious public health concern, and of course we, we take that you know, to heart here in West Virginia. Can you tell us a little bit about the status in West Virginia right now as it relates to the Zika virus? As you mentioned, most of the cases that we've had, about a half a dozen or so, they're all related to travel, um, generally missionary trips out of the country, and uh, those are all cases that are recovered fully and doing well. We do not have any cases of pregnant women at this time. However, there is some pending testing um, that is ongoing currently. Um, in West Virginia, one of the things that while we do not have the disease, we're always concerned to assure that those mosquitoes uh, do not develop the virus or have the virus because they are biting on a person who's traveled from abroad and then in country, you know, getting it in the, and then spreading it. So that's one of the things we're working hard to prepare for. Now, nationally, there's a number of cases that have, they're all as you mentioned, coming from abroad. Um, there are, there's no domestic transmission in the continental United States. There are some in the territories like Puerto Rico where there is some transmission ongoing at this time, and that's the reason we believe that there may be some areas later in the summer that may acquire endemic transmission, meaning domestic transmission of the virus. Now, if I decide I'm going to travel outside the United States, uh, in particular, what parts of, of the other areas of the of outside of our country should I be worried about and then what should I do uh, because as you pointed out I you know I'm not necessarily going to be seriously ill uh, but if I'm pregnant I'm certainly going to be on high alert uh, but we we don't want to bring it back into the country so what are some precautions we should take and then what particular countries are the highest risk countries sure uh, most of those are Latin America Caribbean uh, Central America, uh, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, as well as some of the southern um, uh, continental uh, uh, of the North, uh, southern America countries. What we need to be considering is talk to your travel agent first and foremost if you are planning to travel. If you are in age group that you might get pregnant or you're planning a pregnancy, it's probably very important to make that decision, balance the risk and the benefits of traveling. Now let's say you do decide and you do that and say, well, we're going to go ahead and travel. Then it's important to take proper precautions, the most important of which is to do everything you can to avoid getting bit by mosquitoes while there. So that includes making sure that you wear long pants and shirt uh, with long sleeves because these mosquitoes are also day biters. They're not only dawn and dusk biters. Um, then you make sure that you put insect repellents on, um, protect yourself. We will have a mosquito net, medicated nets while you're there. Uh, live in air conditioning as much as possible, use door nets as well and screens to windows and doors, and avoid getting out when there's most mosquitoes. 
those are some of the things that you can do actually to prevent yourself from getting mosquito bites, which actually is the, the main risk of transmitting this disease in the first place. Now, I had someone, uh, they'd gotten a risk alert from their travel agent. They were going on a cruise, and it really was pretty interesting because it referred them to the CDC website and said, you know, you know, come at your own risk, but mm -hmm. here are some of the things that you need to do. Is there any particular type of insect repellent that an individual needs to get to make sure that it protects them against these types of mosquitoes? Uh, surely. There are a number of those, and the most, the best advice we can give you is if you go to the CDC website, you'll find some EPA-approved uh, insect repellents. They will also tell you the differences between those that you can use for adults, that is, uh, most of those EPA-approved, and some of those that you should not use for children under two years of age, especially infants. So there's a lot of detail that goes into purchasing those, and I think it's important to go to the website of CDC and actually look at those up. Um, it's important that those mosquito repellents that we purchase are approved by the EPA at the same time um, because there's a lot of hand-to-mouth activity in little kids that we avoid those that may be dangerous to the little children if you're having them travel with you. I thought that was really a good point. You know, look at it, make sure you make an informed decision, but if you decide to go, let's make sure that you understand exactly what Absolutely. specifically that you need to do. Now, I know our, you know, our particular uh, agency, the uh, Bureau of Public Health that, that you oversee, uh, we, we're making some plans. Uh, Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're doing and, you know, so our audience knows what specifically, uh, what resources that we have out there for them? Surely, the state of West Virginia at DHHR and the Bureau of Public Health, we're working very closely and with our partners across state government, local government, local partners, private and public sector, as well as a number of agencies and elsewhere to develop something called a Zika Action Plan. We're focused on a number of things. Vector control, that means mosquito control. Surveillance, meaning monitoring those cases that do return to make sure they're being tested appropriately and timely and uh, putting them, developing and helping with the pregnancy registry, making sure that we're monitoring every other aspect of that communications lab and everything else. We're also having a Zika task force that is also working to develop the Zika action plan to, in order to protect the public in a timely way. That's great. Uh, can we go on the website and get more information on this? Absolutely. The website is DIDE, that's D-I-D-E dot W-E dot org, or you can call us at 304-558-5358, extension 1, that's 558-5358, extension 1, or there's also a toll-free number at 800-423-1271, extension 1, that's 800-423-1271, extension 1. Great. Thank you. It's always good to know how well prepared we are and I appreciate all the efforts of you and your team and what we do at Bureau of Public Health. Still to come, June 27th is National HIV Testing Day. We'll look at why this is important for thousands of West Virginians. Stay with us. <music> 